Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash malicious compliance, where people get exactly what they ask for. And in today's episode, you'll hear some super satisfying stories of people obeying others to spite them. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories today, and do remember to hit that subscribe button for future tales. So this is an interaction that I observed at the convenience store the other day. It was a busy day, so there was a bit of a line, and behind me was a couple speaking Spanish to each other. My Spanish is not the best, but I do understand enough to overhear them being cute and flirty with each other. Kind of made me smile because ain't love grand. Then enters Karen, standing behind them in line. Obnoxiously large sunglasses, the classic haircuts, the red lipstick on her teeth. Probably mid-40s. She gets into line and immediately starts looking visibly annoyed. She grunts and sighs audibly, prompting the boyfriend from the Spanish-speaking couple to turn around. He said in perfect English, Hey, is everything alright? Karen then gives him a look that could peel paint from walls, and she says, Oh, I'm fine. I wish people like you had better standards for themselves. You know speaking Spanish in public makes you seem uneducated, right? Now, my knee-jerk reaction upon hearing this was to turn around and tell the lady where she can stick it, but the boyfriend beats me to it. As soon as she said uneducated, the dude's face inexplicably lights up like a Christmas tree. He smiles at her and immediately turns to his girlfriend and starts saying something in French. The girlfriend also responds to him in French. He then turns back to Karen and says, Is that better? At this point, I'm giggling to myself because, damn, that was great. But it's not over. Karen stares at the guy, mouth agape, completely speechless. He says, No, how about this? He then turns to his girlfriend and asks her something in German. The girlfriend laughs and responds in German. Now, I don't speak French or German, but really, I didn't need to. This was comedy gold. At this point, I'm just busting out laughing. Karen and the other people in line saw me, so I just turn to the boyfriend and simply smile at him, and then turn to Karen and let off a, Damn, he told you. I had paid for my stuff by then, and as I leave, I hear the girlfriend ask, So, how many of those languages are you educated in? Now, I wish I'd stayed around to see the end of that interaction. From that moment the dude spoke French, Karen's face was just priceless. Guys, I thought that boyfriend handled that situation perfectly. Like, it's funny how Karen thinks that speaking Spanish in public makes people seem uneducated, when her saying that out loud immediately makes her look like a total idiot. So I'm a 35-year-old female, and I live in a big city in Western Europe. After graduating college, I was hired as an office assistant in a big company. Let's call it the happy place. I did my last internship as a student there, and it went so well that I got hired just a few weeks after getting my master's degree. Over the next 10 years, I worked my way up from an assistant to an office manager to head of one of the biggest departments. I wasn't paid a lot of money, but it was above average and the benefits were great. But the main reason I stayed for so long was the people who worked there. Over the years, I've made quite a few friends there, and by the year 2020, I was one of the most experienced people working in the happy place. My colleagues often came to me for advice about how to do this or how to do that, and I also had a great relationship with the big bosses. And the cherry on top was I had the best boss that someone could hope for. Let's call her Maggie. Maggie was 10 years older than me, and she was Wonder Woman. She's nice, professional, cool, helpful, and has a heart of gold. I've worked with her during my whole time at the Happy Place, and the last four years, she was my direct supervisor, and I loved her. Then in 2020, a few things happened almost at the same time, and over the course of six months, the happy place turned into the sad place. First, the company hired a new HR lady named Karen. Now Karen was the worst. She treated everybody below her level of responsibility, which was pretty much 99% of the staff, as if they were lesser people. She talked down to everybody and constantly made changes in the HR policies. She implemented quite a few new rules, which led us to losing some of the benefits that we liked, such as free lunches, paid time off, etc, etc. But the CEO trusted her for some reason, and soon, he stopped taking meetings with the staff, making Karen the only person who could make decisions regarding the staff, which meant that no one could actually complain about her, and we slowly started feeling helpless. Second, Maggie was promoted to a different field, and she got replaced by Susan, my new supervisor. Susan was cool, but she was my age and with less experience. So even though on paper she was the one in charge, I was the one constantly explaining to her how things worked and what needed to be done, while she took the credit. And lastly, COVID. 
Our line of work was highly impacted by the pandemic, so the whole year of 2020, I was working under an enormous amount of stress, taking almost no vacation time, doing my job and also some of Susan's job, as at some point she went on medical leave. But despite all the hard work, I didn't receive any pandemic-related bonus. So given all the events in 2020, in January 2021, I decided that enough was enough. When it came time for my annual review, I decided that I would negotiate better conditions for myself. As much as I loved my job and the people I've worked for, I couldn't keep working so much for so little pay. As Susan was still on medical leave, Karen was the one who did my review, despite the fact that I've only met her a few times and we've never directly worked together. In preparation for the meeting, I made a full list of things that I've been putting up with and a list of reasons of why I should get a pay bump. I was asking for a 15% pay increase, but I was happy to accept 10%. It wasn't about the money. It was about knowing that there was at least a chance that management valued me as an employee. And I wasn't just some sucker who did so much for not even a thank you. So after making my case to Karen and carefully explaining to her what my job was and what I was actually doing, I asked her the dreaded question, to increase my pay. At that, Karen looks at me, smiled and said, OP. I appreciate everything you've been doing for the company, and we do value you as an employee. But your responsibilities and your abilities are simply not worth that much. Now hearing that, I was speechless. And I admit, I was pretty angry and hurt that I felt tears coming up to my eyes. But I took a deep breath, calmed myself, and said, Thank you for your input, Karen, but I can't keep working in these conditions. It's just not worth it. At that, Karen rolls her eyes and said, Then you can quit but I'll be sorry to see you go. And quit, I did. You see, there were two things that Karen didn't know. First, as explained, I was a highly valued employee with a great reputation and over 10 years of experience in the field. In our field, reputation is important. And for the last two years, I've been receiving job offers from competitors. I always refused because I loved working for The Happy Place. But since the events of 2020, I've started taking interviews and checking what else was out there. And just before my meeting with Karen, I did an interview with Cool Company, who offered me a 60% pay raise to do the same job that I did for Happy Place. Secondly, remember how I took almost no vacation days in 2020? So by January 2021, I had over two months of paid leave available. I checked with HR, not Karen, the week before my annual review, and they confirmed to me in writing that I was free to take my vacation days whenever I wanted. So I did exactly what Karen told me to do. I quit. I put in my two months notice and took my two month vacation, which meant that I only came to work for one day, to clean out my office and say goodbye, before leaving for good. Now, I felt bad because I left so many colleagues in a really bad position since they now had to do my job, but they all assured me that they understood that they would have done the same thing. After two months of paid vacation, I started working at the cool company, and I've been here ever since. I've since kept in touch with a few friends from Happy Place, and they've kept me in the loop of what's going on over there. It seems that me quitting was the push that many of my coworkers needed to also make that final leap and quit. As I said, the conditions went from great to bad since Karen took office. Also, the fact that I quit so abruptly got the attention of the CEO, as we had a good relationship. He asked Maggie, who was aware of the whole story with Karen about it, and she told him the truth. About me not getting the COVID bonus, about Karen speaking down to staff members, and about her telling me to quit if I wanted to. The CEO finally opened his eyes and launched an investigation into Karen's actions. He personally did interviews with some staff members and heard stories about her from people from many different departments. He also investigated the COVID bonus story, and it turns out that she only gave the COVID bonus to her friends from different departments, and then a very generous one to herself. Plus, since I've quit, no one's actually able to do my job. And the fact that Karen was responsible for me leaving made her responsible for the consequences. So after reviewing everything, the CEO decided to terminate Karen's contract. Rumor has it that the whole staff of Happy Place celebrated this joyous occasion. And the cherry on top. So last week, my boss at the cool company walked into my office and said, OP, you know Jen from HR is retiring soon, right? So, we've been doing interviews to replace her, and one of the candidates is Karen. She seems competent, but she asks for quite a lot of money. You and her work together, right? What's she like? I then say to him, boss, do you have a few minutes? Great, let me tell you a story. So after hearing my very honest opinion of Karen, boss man laughed and said, Okay, good to know. I think we'll tell her that she's not the right fit for us. Thanks, OP. 
As soon as the boss man left my office, I sent an email to my friend Lori from HR, who's in charge of replying to candidates. I also told her the story and asked her to keep me informed if there's any development with the whole Karen applies to cool company thing. A few hours later, I got an email from Lori. It turns out she copied me to her official reply to Karen. It read, Dear Karen, thank you for your interest in working for Cool Company. After careful consideration, we regret to inform you that in our opinion, your responsibilities and your abilities are simply not worth that much. Oh, that last part was gold, guys. I love how what she said to OP came back to eventually bite her. It's amazing how quickly one person in the right position can ruin an entire workplace. So OP does have an update, and the update reads, So the CEO from Happy Place approached me last week to ask me to come back and work for him. He offered me more money, but didn't really apologize for what he let happen to me and the entire team. I said no, because even though Karen's no longer there, things haven't really changed. At least, not for the better. Almost all the good people from that place have left since my departure. Even those who've been there for 20 years. That includes my friend Maggie, who now works with me at the cool company. I could not be happier. And judging by her LinkedIn page, Karen is still looking for work. So, this story happened a couple of years ago, when I was fresh in high school, in year 7. One important thing to note with me is that I am profoundly deaf in both ears, and I can't hear a single thing without the use of my cochlear implants. However, I can lip read pretty accurately, so I'm not completely lost without them. Another thing to note is that my implants run on batteries, and they need to be replaced every two days. This will be important later on. Now, most teachers were pretty understanding about this, and would often go out of their way to make sure that I could clearly hear what they were saying. Except for one teacher, who was a hard ass about it. She also happened to be a music teacher, and she'll be known as Miss O. Also, this is probably the worst combo, because music is my weakest subject for obvious reasons. So enter the malicious compliance. So me and my class are off to our music lesson, and this happens to be a double period, which is about an hour and 30 minutes long. Anyway, we start the lesson, and pretty much two minutes after we sit down, the batteries in my implants had run flat, so I needed to change them. However, as my bag was in the room next door, I decided to raise my hand, like an obedient little boy, and ask if I could go grab my batteries. At this point, I could still lip read and understand what the teacher was saying, but I'd much rather be able to hear. Anyway, she pretty much ignores the fact that my hand is up. And after a couple of minutes, I pretty much get the hint that she doesn't want to answer my question. So I thought, whatever, I can still lip read and understand most of what she's saying. So Miss O basically asked the whole class to go on the computers and listen to an audio file that she'd sent us via email, and then use that as inspiration to create our own piece of music. She also wanted us to show it to the class at the end of the lesson. Now, because I didn't want to get in trouble, I raise my hand again to try to ask if I can get the batteries from my bag. But she ignores me again, so I'm like, I don't even like music anyway, so no big deal. As a result, I pretty much sit in front of the computer screen doing nothing, as I can't hear the audio file or make any somewhat decent piece of music. Now, remember that this is a double period, so it's a pretty long wait. After 5 minutes, I get bored and I decide to start talking to my friends, and basically let them in on a joke. And we were all trying our hardest to not laugh too hard. Pretty soon, word gets around the class and now, they can't wait until the end of the lesson to see what Miss O is gonna do. The end of the lesson rolls around and when it's my turn to play my piece of music, I pretty much sit in silence and the whole class starts laughing but trying to stifle it at the same time. And this is how the conversation goes between me and her at that point. She says, Can you not hear me? I asked you to play your piece of music. I still sit in silence, and the laughter is getting louder. She screams, Are you even listening to me? Are you trying to disrespect me by not listening to anything I say? Now, I'm still sitting quiet, and she says, Honestly, just play your piece of music, it's not that hard. Now, I'm trying to stifle my laughter at this point, and I can't. She's screaming at me saying, Is this how you treat your teachers? Get out of my class right now. So I get out and pretty much wait there until the lesson is over. I think she was expecting an apology from me, which was never going to happen, because after a couple of minutes, she pops her head out the door and barks at me saying, You have absolutely no respect for teachers. Meet me at the principal's office at lunchtime. So at lunchtime, I meet her at the principal's office like she said. Another important thing is that I'm pretty friendly with the headmaster. She opens the door and this is the conversation as follows. 
My music teacher says, This guy is giving me an attitude during my lesson and wouldn't listen to me. I would give him a Friday after school detention, but I feel like he deserves to get a Saturday detention. The headmaster turns to me and asks, What happened? I say, Well, my batteries for my cochlear implant died, and I raised my hand to ask if I could get the replacement batteries from my bag, but she proceeded to ignore me. Hearing that, my music teacher looked like she just had an epiphany. Headmaster looks at her and says, Are you sure about this because he hasn't had a prior record about being disobedient? My music teacher is looking flabbergasted and she says, Yes, I'm absolutely sure he was just disrespecting me. I then say to the headmaster, You know that I'm deaf and I would never on purpose do that to a teacher. Headmaster then says, Well, I'm inclined to believe this student here. If you have no proof otherwise, there is nothing to discuss. Miss O then goes extremely red as she realizes her mistake and then storms out of the office. The headmaster gave me a slight smile before ushering me out of the office as well. Ever since then, she's never ignored me when I've had my hand up. Now, one would think that if you were a music teacher, you would definitely know who your hearing impaired students are, right? And I love this comment right here, guys. It says, maybe she couldn't see your hand because her eyes ran out of batteries. This story all started December of last year and just finished last week. So I bought a car from one of those buy here, pay here places. I love the car. It's a Mazda 5 from 2014, basically the smallest minivan that I've ever seen. Well, on Christmas, we drove to some family for dinner and celebration. When we went to leave, the car wouldn't start. We checked everything and found out that the horn wasn't even connected. Any fuse that wasn't absolutely needed was simply missing, and the tires were the original tires. Beyond that, we hooked up to the computer, and it read several errors, but the one getting in the way was the immobilizer. I had never known that Van had one. I called AAA and set up a towing, but because we were in the middle of nowhere, AAA couldn't get a tow truck to us under our membership, so we had to call a tow truck and then submit the bill to AAA after the fact. So family let us borrow their car and the van was towed to a shop. A few days later and the shop calls us and tells us what's wrong. I live in Texas, a single party consent state and I record all my calls thanks to an app on my phone. The long list of car issues isn't important. The point of this van is a basic work van. The only issue they found stopping it from running is the immobilizers active and they can't touch it without talking to the dealer. So I three-way called the dealership and the shop, and we talked for 20 minutes. During the call, the dealership acknowledged that everything should be working unless it malfunctioned. The dealership also gave permission for the shop to bypass it, and we would be reimbursed the towing and repairs. All the shop needed to do to get the van running was bypass the immobilizer, and a couple days later, we picked up the can and paid the bill. Both bills came out to just under $300, and we started calling the dealership. The first few conversations go well, and the phone rep seemed interested in helping. But mostly, I ended up getting tossed around from department to department and then disconnected. That went on for some time, and I of course took to Reddit to find out options. As almost always happens, Reddit users know some crazy facts and how to get stuff done. So I followed their advice and kept calling and eventually getting to talk to a supervisor. And the first supervisor said he'd get it taken care of, and we ended the call. Two more days go by and nothing's heard. So I call back, get tossed around again, and we get another manager who says we are not responsible for mechanical issues, and hangs up. I call back, now quite annoyed, and eventually I get back to the same manager. I explain that I have all the information and call recordings, including the repair shop three-way call. He then cuts me off and says, What? Are you going to take us to court over $296.47? I don't think so, but go ahead and sue. We will win. And if that small amount is worth suing to you, you probably don't have the resources to actually sue, so go ahead. Now, this of course made me quite upset, so off to a justice of peace and explain what's happened. They give us a small claims form and explain the process. We can fill it out and pay for a constable to serve the dealer, or we can fill out the paper and take it to the dealer unfiled and explain everything to a manager in person. We chose the cheaper route because the manager on the phone was right. We didn't have the money to have it served, only filled. So we transcribed the phone calls. We found out how to fill the paper and the hardest part was finding the agent. We didn't know what that meant, but again, we turned to Reddit and learned. We gathered the bills and all the paperwork and we made our way to the dealership payment center. I wait in line to see the name of the manager is the same as the manager on the phone that told me to sue. I wait in line, and when it's my turn, I ask to talk to John, and he comes over and sits across from me. After making introductions and I confirm it's the same guy, I start explaining the situation again. 
As I'm explaining, I see when he recalls talking to me on the phone. He starts to dismiss me, and I explain that he asked me to sue, and I'm here with all my evidence and the unfixed suit, giving him one final chance. He starts to look over the papers, and asked if I still had the recordings. I said yes, I could email him a copy. We sit and talk for about an hour as he reads. Then I said with a slightly aggravated tone that if something isn't done today, that I'm gonna head back to the courthouse and file, as well as tack on as much for emotional distress and whatever else the clerk hinted at, as well as send a copy of everything to every email on the corporate website. At this, our conversation drew the attention of a woman in a power suit, who rushes over for a recap. I found out that she's John's boss's boss's boss, and she's none too happy with how far things have gone. She assured me that all would be made right, and gave me her cell phone number and email, and I gave her the papers and left. The next Monday at 8am, I get a call asking if credit being applied to the account would be acceptable. I say yes, and she explains that they'll credit $500 to the account as payment. I agree, and we talk for a few minutes, and I ask why it took this much to get things done. She laughed and said it shouldn't have, and certain people are no longer employed at the company. Well, today was Wednesday, and the day of the payment. But when I went to make the payment, it was already done, so thank you, power suit lady. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash malicious compliance. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories in this one. If you did, hit that like button. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, a super entitled Karen demands OP give her five-year-old his gun. His freaking gun. It's such a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.